Morgan. We're here with uh, Tim Estes, who's the CEO, and Rob Metcalf, who's the president and COO of Digital Reasoning. Welcome, gentlemen. Um, I thought maybe Bob Metcalf was coming on, but uh, my friend Bob Metcalf that I used to work with. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so congratulations. Saw you guys up on the big screen on the keynote. So that's exciting news. So take us through. Mike Olson, you know, giving some good love to Digital Reasoning. So. You know, it was a kind of, kind of complicated slide. It's complex solution. So, you know, one, tell us why you guys are on there and uh, what's the story. Yeah, well, well thanks for having us on. And um, I think that, uh, you know, Mike has been, I consider him both a friend and a partner. Um, so we've had a great relationship with Cloud here that goes back into, uh, I think it was probably uh, summer of 09, so rather early in that process. Uh, and, and we started migrating on to Hadoop in 09. Uh, and for an unstructured data play, that was pretty early. Um, so that's a, it's a little tricky from the standpoint of technology that moves beyond counting things that are well structured, to being able to figure what you're measuring. Like what is in unstructured data, who are the entities, who are the people, who are the places. It sort of presumes pattern recognition, it presumes other analytics to even make the building blocks that can't be counted. So that's been a big gap. So that slide was talking about how do you take loose, noisy information, and our pedigrees in the defense space and the intelligence space, how do you take loose, noisy information that's disconnected, unstructured, and then connect it together so that you can then apply analytics to it in a business, you know, valuable way? Um, and so Mike, I think, wanted to show what was possible. He knows about some of our implementations, you know, in other places. Well, let's jump so. into that in a second, but back up and tell the folks about Digital Reasoning, the company, uh, what you guys are all about, and, and uh, specifically educate them on, and, and then we'll go into the Hadoop side. Yeah, um, so I, I think that uh, to understand digital reasoning is to understand that we wanted to create a way to take human communication and use algorithms to make sense of it without having to have a human design an ontology or design some other structure a priori. And so basically digital reasoning is a 30-ish uh, person solver company growing quickly right now, um, but principally in the defense intelligence area and moving into the markets, financial services, enterprise risk. Um, and I think that uh, kind of the transition from what we've, been, what we've been doing technically to sort of where the business value, I want to introduce Rob and kind of have him jump into this since he came off of Lexus and we really wanted to bring in you know, that kind of knowledge about how to apply information to business value in the DNA of our company. So the ontology thing has been a hard nut to crack uh, for years. It's always been kind of an academic thing. And, but now with machines, if you can build a good algorithm or seed, you can actually scale. And the reasoning has been one of those things around with now this metadata available. Just give us the kind of walk us through kind of like the, what's under the covers uh, with digital reasoning and some of the tech involved. For you on that. Oh Can you go yeah. On that? So <laughs> yeah, um, I mean this is the uh, you know the the founder inventor at those questions tend to get thrown right back at you. Uh, and so um, well, I, I was a philosophy major by background, and so uh, what? Uh, oh, that explains it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So <laughs> the new data science um, mix of uh, <laughs> that's right disciplines. I mean, yeah, I mean, like an in intelligence analysis, uh, a lot of people are in the liberal arts area that also do good math, if you will, and so those two skill sets allow for creativity and then computation to come together. So for us, uh, what's underneath the covers, if you will, the fundamental difference is we look at a way a word is used in context, a symbol. So like toothbrush. And you can figure out what toothbrush means without having an ontology of toothbrush, you know, being under hygiene or some other, because like, where do you really put toothbrush, right? Is it a stick? You know, is, it, is it basically something that's under you know, human hygiene? So where do you fit it? Well, it's known by how it's used. So it tends to be associated with toothpaste and teeth and generally mornings and hopefully evenings if you're you know, very hygienic. So what the system does is it looks at patterns of the way a word is used in context to ground a word in terms of its surrounding material. And that's how a human baby does it too, right? I mean, they're not exposed to, you know, here's the taxonomy that came down from Aristotle. And then we only know what this means. They're exposed to invariant patterns. And what we do is we build that from the ground up which allows us to handle data that's traditionally defied knowledge engineering. Um, and that those algorithms have been now ported to work on Hadoop and work at scale and on some of the hardest data sets you know, in the world that are inside certain agencies. So it's, is, it a, is it a sort of modern form of, of what I think of as classification, which is a brute force miserable exercise? It's sort of a, an automated approach toward drawing inferences for this large corpus of data, is that? Fair description? Um, I think the way I would classify it uh, yeah, is, no it's, it's, yeah, <laughs> if it's a bad pun if it was one, um, is as a clustering algorithm. 
So you look at the similarity of things and you build hierarchical similarity from the bottom up so that you can make things relate to other things with no a priori set of categories, yeah, right? Okay, right? And so we do have the capability to do entity extraction and sort of pattern recognition type approaches, classification approaches through training. Um, but we see that technology, while we would say we're comparable to the best in the world at that, and especially one that runs on Hadoop, um, we think that technology you know, is very useful at the high level, but it gets really hard at the details, right? Because a massive human investment is necessary to apply that at low granularity categories. So we try to do the, the, the hard low end stuff, the bottom of the, of the ontology wheel, from the bottom up algorithmically through clustering, and do the top down through classification. Yeah, so. Okay. okay, so now, uh, Rob, let's bring you into the discussion, because I know, John, you, you could go all day on this topic, and we probably stuff. will. <laughs> uh, but, but Rob, take us through the discussions you're having with customers in terms of, all right, how are they applying this? What do they want to do with this, you know, this cool secret sauce? Yeah, so across a, a number of different areas, you've got customers who have a large amount of unstructured data that could be inside the firewall, that could be outside, things they want to understand, but today they essentially have to read. Or best, they have to put forward a solution which gives them a subset of documents to read, sort of search and recall. What they're ultimately trying to do, though, and what we're all trying to do, is identify actors and actions and facts and patterns and put those things in place in time. And we want to be able to do that in the most efficient, automated way possible. We don't want to have to go read and then load things into, into, into fact bases. We want a computer to do it for us. And so when that's in the, um, you know, in, in the government scenario, that can be to find bad actors. Um, if it's in a, uh, in a legal uh, environment, you know, they're always fundamentally trying to answer the questions you know, around who knew what when. Um, that information may be you know, in you know, emails, that may be, information may be out in discussion boards, it may be out in you know, other areas. To be able to fuse those things together, and this is where the sort of the technology and what Tim just walked us through in terms of the ability to take on a lot of different domains and be able to understand those things without having to pre-model really matters. You need something that can link across various data sets and surface the key people or entities, organizations, and things, and enable you to start to draw connections, conclusions from that data. And that matters, we think, in you know, whether you're a, a bank or a financial services business trying to make uh, sophisticated, intelligent trades, whether you're doing electronic discovery and trying to um, much more efficiently uh, search and, and understand large amounts of data. We think it matters uh, down the road um, in uh, health as well, where you've got large amounts of unstructured data in uh, health records uh, that can really only be st understood today if someone has to read it. So you touched on about four use cases, if I got it right. Government going after bad guys, trying mm -hmm. to figure out what the chatter says and, and what kind of patterns and you know where the bad guys are. Um, NSA must love that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Legal <laughs> IT, I guess, the e-discovery space, you know, what what largely has been email archiving, which is this little slice of risk, of enterprise risk, mm -hmm. information risk, I should say. Um, and then analytics, making money on Wall Street, and then eventually saving lives. Mm -hmm. um, what, and, and today, if I understand it, you guys are primarily working with the government, right, and looking to obviously take that to, to the commercial sector, right? Try. Um, how's that going? That's going well. I mean, I think that we're um, we're kind of on the bleeding edge of what's going on in Hadoop, as Mike made in his keynote. You know, the year ahead of us is probably the year of applications. Yeah. Um, we believe that part of the application area that's been very limitedly you know, exploited, analyzed, understood is the unstructured data. Um, and we think that fundamentally, uh, that's where most of the value is still latent. So uh, the structured data, we already have patterns for handling that. We just haven't been able to scale it very well. And unstructured data is a different problem because we don't even have really the patterns at hand to understand what we can do with that when we when we do. So. What's the go-to-market and growth strategy? I mean, what the go to market, The growth strategy for you guys. Obviously, this is a hot area. Reasoning has been the concept that is really ready for prime time with Hadoop, enables so much more capabilities at scale as in, 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 that you guys are doing. Um, there's different use cases in terms of your customers. I mean, they want to do they embed it? Are they licensing it? Um, and then as the market grows, how do you guys grow your business? I mean, because, I mean, the surveillance tech that Hadoop enables is pretty compelling. So things like we were talking yesterday, the transactional side of the business is not there yet with Hadoop. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's still fast, I mean, low latency with HBase, but it's not still not transactional in the mm -hmm. nanosecond that Wall Street, for example, needs right now. So how do you guys see that playing for you right now? Are you still in that? BI, business intelligence-like category? 
his transactional workload, something you're doing? Um, what's the story there? Yeah, I don't see it being transactional uh, because essentially what we're trying to do is lower you know, the human effort to understand and read things. Got it. So when we talk about automating understanding, I mean, that's sort of like a, a phrase we've seized on in this. Um, it's really about how do you take on a class of data where we no longer can scale the human resources to understand it. Because what's happened is data's gone up about 100x in the last maybe 15 years to 16 years. About 10x in the last six, right? So you can back up to the web around 01, 02, get another 10x there. Human attention has not expanded. So what's end up happening is we do a search and you get maybe the top 1% to 5%, depending upon the amount of data involved, 10 to 15 years ago. Now we're getting the 0.5%, the 0.1%. Or we're getting worse than that in the larger data sets, 0.01%. And the psychological thing happens yeah. when you're dealing with such a small sample that you feel you have no confidence at all anymore. So that already has been hit by the Intel community. And so they've had to make a preemptive investment in that area, which you know we're part of. And I think that it's, it's true in the of financial services and people that have large scale data problems. So Web 2.0 community that has this data, comments, those pieces, as well as financial intelligence, it's natural they're gonna to have to do that next because they can't go hire 100,000 people to read this stuff. So information risk is inherently distributed mm -hmm. by, by its nature. So, and if I understand it, you're not trying to bring all that information into one big data temple. Right? You're going to where the, the data is. Can you talk a little bit about how you see that, that working, maybe specifically in the commercial case and, and even in a, in a legal mm -hmm. scenario? How will a customer actually practically exploit your software to solve you know, problems related to who knows what, when, where? Yeah, sure, I mean, I think what, what you'll have is a, essentially as, as data is either uh, consolidated in certain locations or identified in, in, in various ones, you'll have to go and run uh, an algorithmic process to get at the key facts and relationships, and you'll have to store and process that information across the various uh, data stores. So rather than sort of necessarily consolidating everything in one place, what we think about is there's a there's there's data, and then there's the the analytical or understanding layer. There's the, the entities and the relationships, which is a, a metadata. The meta, it, it, yeah. You can think of it as very very a lot uh, of it. <laughs> in, everything is metadata in our models. Yeah, right. right. So, <laughs> so it, it matters not just that a particular person is talked about, but who they spoke with. That's that's that you can think of that as metadata, but that's ultimately yeah, a, that's, that's, a yeah. very, very sort of feature-rich uh, environment which you can run statistics on, and to the extent that you can start to summarize those entities and the things that they're doing, you can run the statistics either locally or, you know, uh, we'd in, like to do aggregate. some. Well, we'd love to do some follow-up with you guys. Love, I mean, we can talk for an hour on this, talk more about the technology and the solutions in place, because that's the future, what you guys are doing is the future, we're, we're covering it, so. Uh, uh, um, we're out of time, but I want to follow up with you guys for sure. So uh, that'd be great. Uh, Just real quick, uh, real, 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 real quick, we can. So thirty people funded? Um, uh, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Soon okay. to be big data fund. Uh, Hello. Uh, out, out, uh, out, out looking for money or actively or can you say? Uh, we're just not going to comment right now. Okay, uh, that means yes. Translation, everyone wants to fund them. So, you know. Uh, good for you. Auction. Uh, One word, auction. <laughs> I like them a lot already. So. Learn from yeah. Frank Quattrone, baby. Um. <laughs> no, thank you very much for having yeah, us. Really it's been a real pleasure. On. And we're awesome. happy to come back at any time. We think it's going to be a very, very big change in the way computers are used when we can harness unstructured data over the next decade, the way we've been able to harness yeah. structure for the last 20 years. Yeah. Excellent. Any VC Thanks, watching, you got to fund these guys. It's the future. Love it. All right. Tim Estes, Rob Metcalf, thank thanks very much. Uh, digital Reasoning, watch these guys, and uh, we'll be watching. Thank you. Great. Thank, thank you guys. very much. Okay, our next question. Uh, Amy.